Hi folks, it's me, Ali. It's the end of the day. I've just done with all the patients and I had an interesting case today that I wanted to share with you, especially in the face of the 10 year anniversary of the bioceramics. And the case that I want to share with you was a case that I did right at the beginning of the hydraulic condensation on a C-shaped molar. And uh, you know, this patient was actually a hygienist for one of my referring dentists. So I ended up seeing this patient back again for uh, another tooth and I took an x-ray of this tooth that I had treated which was the lower second molar with a c-shaped root that had an apical lesion at the time it was asymptomatic the symptoms had resolved obviously 10 years later and the bone had healed so this is kind of like the longest recall of a bioceramic case that I have done that I wanted to share with you because it does show that the, the material is stable over 10 year time as well as the fact that there is a little uh, there was a squirt of the material that was out and it has kind of stayed in the area, which means that it's kind of non resolvable and stays in there in the long run, which is actually a benefit of a cement that you need to use for a technique such as hydraulic condensation, which is a sealer based or a filler based obturation. You don't want to have a cement that's resorbable because it'll wash out over time. Uh, so that's a significant thing. And it also reminded me of a case that I had shared earlier on and I'm just going to want to share with you today which is another C-shaped molar that I had done. Uh, and this tooth was one of the earlier cases of hydraulic condensation in which a C-shaped second molar was uh, treated with hydraulic condensation on biceramic cement. And it turned out that the tooth was fractured, so the tooth had to be extracted uh, shortly thereafter. However, it did not break down at the apical area of the tooth, uh, but it was on the side because of the vertical fracture that was present on this distal end of the tooth. Of course, trying to make the most of a uh, situation to learn more, I took this tooth and I then I sectioned it uh, apically up. And during the sections, as they started to section this tooth, I realized that this idea of the sealer really filling, being the filler, and flowing into these uh, nooks and crannies, and then actually, in the case of the C-shaped root, really following the C-shaped anatomy of the tooth was very, very um, reassuring to me. To show that this, uh, to, to demonstrate the, the hydraulically condensed uh, sealer getting into these C-shaped areas and bonding to these areas, and then having these additional cones that I had added to the C-shaped canal uh, acting as really fillers in the middle and as really condensers for the hydraulic condensation. Anyway, I hope this little video was helpful to you. Just demonstrates the longevity argument for hydraulic condensation and the fact that it's uh, not only effective and it works uh, beautifully, but it's also very efficient because it only uses the minimum amount of condensation and it's all done at the coronal top of the tooth and not by this very complicated uh, uh, condensation techniques that we had developed over time. And we at Real are very proud to be able to introduce this to the profession to help uh, make endodontic therapy and obturation um, kind of democratize it and make it a little bit easier for everyone to be able to do it in a predictable fashion as well as a simple and efficient fashion. But we will then know, I'm Alina Say, and I hope you found this information helpful.